Okay, folks, here's a little walk around of the plane all finished up and outside uh, before I take her to the field and the, do the maiden today or tomorrow. We got weather today. Uh, I'm actually going to try and take this out today. So I'm going to do a quick walk around on all the things I've done with this Razorback mod on the 1700 millimeter FMS P47 jug. This was the silver version originally. Okay, start with the canopy here. First of all, you can see this right here is a top flight 60 size or uh, giant scale Razorback P47 jug canopy that fits real well on this FMS bird. This turtle back right here is made of ABS plastic and there's some spray foam up inside here that is glued to the frame. The uh, dorsal fin here for the end version that it comes with was cut off right back here, repainted, molded so that this would taper down to it and end at the fuselage like it's supposed to be and then uh, use an exacto knife to kind of continue the lines and tie it all together here. The paint job on this is still the original factory paint job with just touch-ups on it. I made my own set of decals all the way around with the exception of just a few of the existing decals. That star and bar right there is the original FMS decal. Uh, all the others are custom made. Uh, this is the original FMS decal. I went ahead and left it alone. If you use alcohol, a uh, lots of uh, alcohol when you're peeling these off, you can avoid peeling up the paint if you'll peel them back real slow so you don't have to do a lot of repainting if you want to keep the original finish. These two stars and bars on the fuselage are from Cali Graphics that I had left over from another plane that just happened to fit and the star and bar on the other side of the uh, wing that's on the bottom is the original FMS decal. Uh, all the other decals are custom made water slide transfers that I did myself on my printer. The FM, now if you haven't noticed this, there you go, FMS promotion. That's my call signs on this bird, FMS. The rest of it is hand painted. This is the prototype, very first, FMS, call sign FMS. Heavenly Thunder P47 D Razorback 1700 millimeter P47 Thunderbolt Jug built by Brandon Moon. Okay, the antenna is the original antenna. I cut a little slot here, and as you can see here, I'll pull the canopy up, uh, and you'll see what I've done here. I actually don't need it. You can actually lift the canopy up just from this right here, so you don't need this pull tab anymore. But I did add it. <coughs> You'll see from inside here, I sprayed some foam, and I have a piece of foam stuck in here so the antenna has something to grab onto, and it just sticks in there. I don't glue it in. It stays nice and I, I trim. Whoops, where is it at? I trimmed off the sides of it, as you can see, that come with it, so that I can take the antenna on and off. The antenna can actually poke into the foam here, just like... The other mod here, since they got this upside down, the pitot tube does not install with the weather vane down, it installs with the weather, weather vane up. So I glued their existing in here, I cut it off with an X-Acto, I took a 256 screw and I glued it into this, I cut the head off the screw, put a piece of heat shrink around it, painted it silver, drilled a little hole. That way I can screw it on and off. And now the weather vane is in the correct direction. That was one of the mods. The hatch mod, nothing done to the hatch whatsoever, except that I added this canopy, and as you can see the two pieces that still stick off the back here, and the pieces on the inside there. Uh, the video's not working real well here added that piece of wood block right there that extends all the way from the bottom right here just glued in with CA that was the original place where the ribbon was that you could pull the canopy up get your fingers on it extended it up to the top of this 
this piece right here is a piece of ABS plastic that will finish out the canopy to make the hatch so that it has an even line right here. And then I've made a small little plastic lip that it sits on to hide it and this actually now becomes one of the panel lines. Put a screw on top of it, cut that little ribbon down just so that little hand hold. I actually dyed it silver, just painted it with silver paint. Bingo, canopy snapped on and now it's a D version which is more popular than the bubble version on here. Um, the overall all mod of this change right here add, has added about a pound to this airplane. So now its its flying weight is about 10 and a half, 11 pounds and since this bird comes in a little tail heavy, even stock, I'm using a pair of Jens Ace 5500s and I still had to add five ounces of lead weight to the cowling which I'll show here in just a minute. That's with those batteries placed all the way forward and this thing has more than ample enough room to put huge batteries in it all the way forward. You could actually put the biggest ones I've seen so far are a pair of Zippy 8000s and they were probably pretty good for this plane because you need the weight up front anyway. The two 3S Zippy 8000s would be good plus, plus it would give you probably quite a bit of flying time. You'd probably get 10-15 minutes out of them. 25C. It's not a real speed demon. <clears throat> In the cowl lipping right here, this plastic cowl, which is really, really nice, on the inside of it, using um, Gorilla Glue, which expands to a foam, I have a whole bunch of bolts, nuts, and stuff like that, lead weights that are in here, and they're as, as far forward as you can get them. And I've got 5.6 ounces glued into this to help balance this plane as it is with all my ordnance. These are the stock bombs. I did make a pair of bazooka rocket launchers out of one inch rocket tubes and the CG is at 90 millimeters which is pretty far forward on the leading edge. Right there you can see my two little marks in reference to the very first panel line on the wing and now it balances slightly about 10 degrees down nose heavy when balanced upside down and the gear retracted since the gear retract and folds slightly aft. I did a balance on it with the gear retracted so when they come down this plane is actually going to take a nose heavy set which I want for the first couple of flights until I retrim it. I may end up taking weight out of the nose after I fly this thing a few times if it's too nose heavy. But uh, better more nose heavy than not on the first flights and then we can readjust from there. Don't want to make a maiden flight with tail heavy bird. On my particular one I did split the flaps off of here because when I received it the living hinge was already split halfway down on this particular hinge right here so I decided to go ahead and use the Hobby King hinges which I posted pictures on earlier works really nice I used four of them to make a semi fowler looking flap and I cut a piece off the bottom of this piece that's molded in and actually put it on the flap which is actually the way the scale flap does anyway so that it actually comes down it actually gives you more flaps so my flaps are actually an inch longer than the stock ones because I'm using part of the fuselage as the flap on the bottom anyway. And today she gets her maiden flight. I have the stock retracts, but due to the problems we've had with the 1700 millimeter birds and the retracts over centering the trunnion on hard landings. I opted to go with my E-Flights and I have a pair of 6120 E-Flight uh, retracts on here, 90 degrees. These are not 85s, these are 90s. So you can see that the gear sits pretty, pretty nice. I think the 85s would cock the gear in too much because this airplane has a little stronger dihedral in it than the Mustang does. Uh, as you can see it's sitting on there. And I'm using the stock struts off of the original gears until FMS releases these new V2 retracts that they've uh, promised us, those of us who have written into them, that uh, I, I heard on RC Groups are going to be out sometime in June. So I'm waiting to hear back from them. I actually wrote them today. So FMS, I need my retracts. We want retracts for these beautiful birds you're doing and your new things so we don't have to spend $150, $200 on 
e flight retracts for these airplanes, which are turning them into thousand dollar foam airplanes. Let's keep the price down on them and get a set of retracts that are good and quality. It's the only weak link in your airplane right now that we have discovered is the retracts. So this is an outside. Get it out of, out of the house here and actually get it in some sunlight. And here's photos for you guys and the walk around. All the servos I'll be flying in this will be the stock servos. I did make the bomb drop functional by adding two 9G servos. And I'm using standard HXT 9000s and using the bomb release mechanisms from Hobby Lobby actually modified on the existing pylon that I posted more detailed pictures on earlier. As you can see there, so we can keep the nice shape of the pylon. And I had originally pulled my old ones off my Mustang and I used those to make the attachments for the bazooka launchers. Okay, there she is guys. There's the D-Mod, or the D-Mod Razorback for the P-47. I'll be doing another one of these shortly for the uh, B version I did for the P-51 Mustang. And some detailed pictures and a little short video clip and walk around on it for the Hatch Mod. Hope you guys enjoy. More video to follow hopefully tonight of the actual maiden flight.